the introduction. And welcome everybody. Um, I'm just going to do a bit of a screen share here so we can start the presentation. I'm glad I'm do not doing this Friday because nobody would be here. We'd all be out to hitting the stores probably, right? <laughs> okay, so screen share. Here we go. Uh, decorating your small scale home. I don't have a script. I'm just going to kind of uh, talk from the heart here, people. I found this meme and I thought it was really appropriate. It says, not the size of your library that matter, but how you use it. Brantford happens to have a really big library, but basically that same principle applies for your home as well too. Um, today, we're going to talk about just a few of the things that are important when you're considering decorating a small scale home. The function, not only the function of the home as a whole, but the pieces that you're putting in it, how you're using color, mirrors and glass, the scale of the items that you're putting in the home, defining the areas in the home, and also a focal point. So the first topic is function. So bigger does not always mean better. The number one rule of design is form follows function. So if I have a gorgeous Ferrari car, but the engine's not working, the form looks really good, but it's not functioning. So it doesn't work for me. So I always want that function to go first. So it doesn't matter how large, small, pretty, expensive, basically you fill in the blank there. Your home or the items that are in it, uh, if they don't function well for you, they're not going to be worthwhile to you. Always keep that in mind. Don't be dazzled by pretty things. Okay, think about how you're going to use that in your space. Look for pieces uh, with multiple functions. So uh, this is my favorite little decorating piece. This is a piece by Canadell, which is a Canadian company out of Quebec. And wherever possible, I like to specify Canadian made furniture. Uh, God bless our Canadian made uh, Canadian furniture companies. A lot of them over the years have gone out of business because they've been put out of business and the same goes for uh, companies in the States uh, because of cheap offshore uh, furniture and uh, people have, have uh, been drawn to uh, disposable furniture. Uh, but um, Canadell is a wonderful company that makes beautiful quality furniture. And this piece is an amazing little piece. It can be pushed to the side, uh, used as a console, but when you want it to function as an extra workspace, pull it into the middle of the room. You can see it can be used as a spice rack, extra storage, place for cookbooks, uh, moves around wherever you need it to. So that's an excellent little piece. Any kind of a, a uh, like a workstation like that, but it's movable, works really good. And this is a lovely little piece. How smart is this? Uh, this could look uh, really nice in a little foyer in a condo. Uh, a little, con It would look like a little console, put a vase and a little light on here. But when you have company or need some extra seating or friends over for a game of cards, I'm gonna pretend there isn't COVID. <laughs> <laughs> then you pull this out and there, voila, extra seating. How smart is that? Those are the chairs tucked in there. I just love that little piece. And, uh, and if you have uh, an extra room that you'd like to put a bed sofa in, you want to have the grandkids over, you can have bunk beds for them. I found this on the internet. How cool is that? So just pop it up and you've got bunk beds. Somebody gets the bottom bunk and somebody can fight over who gets the top bunk. And ottomans are a classic multifunction piece. Okay, they can be used for extra seating and of course extra storage. And also I like to use them as a coffee table as well. Put a great big 
tray on there. You could serve drinks, hors d'oeuvres, lots of ways that you could use these ottomans. Um, this is a piece by Durham Furniture, again, another Canadian company out of Durham, Ontario, beautifully crafted Canadian furniture. And this bed comes in just a regular platform bed, but it also comes in a lift. So lots of storage under here, whether it's a queen, the double or the king size bed. So your uh, winter blankets or anything like that, even, you know what I'd love to use this for? I have my summer clothes and my winter clothes. I put everything under there for the different seasons. Um, so that's a really smart idea. I love that. And this, I actually saw this at uh, the exhibition a couple of years ago and it blew me away. I just thought, how smart is that? It's not just a regular um, uh, type of a Murphy bed that can tuck into the wall. But when it is tucked up, you can drop down a desk. So if you don't have that extra room or extra space for a, an office, uh, you know, paying bills or if you're working from home, then this is a great little space. Just tuck your laptop away in the cupboard and then use this space. Uh, Excellent, excellent idea. Now you're saying, well, what is what does a, a dining room table have to do with multifunction? Uh, have you ever thought about using your dining room chairs in this way? Uh, one of my first homes that I had uh, was a small home, and we had all of these extra dining room chairs, uh, but not you know, unless we had the leaf in, we really didn't have room to put the dining room chairs. So there's a little bay window in the front. I put a round uh, table with a lamp on it and then the two dining room chairs on either side of it. I made a beautiful little arrangement. And then when we had company, I brought in the dining room chairs to use uh, at the dining room table. So that's a really nice way to create a little uh, area, maybe in a foyer or uh, the side of your living room, and then swing those dining room chairs in when you're entertaining. And uh, that extra spot to store them in, then you don't need them. And just a little side note while we're on the note of uh, dining room tables, uh, whenever, even in the kitchen as well, whenever you can use, uh, or you get round tables, that's best. They're gonna take up less space. They're much easier to move around in a small space. So think round for coffee tables, dining group tables, kitchen tables. Um, I'm gonna throw in some favorite decorating quotes. So being bold in your decorative choices is essential for small spaces. So don't think that, uh, you have to go with light colors or use this or that, you know, just have some fun, you know, just don't be timid about it. Look at how beautiful this little space is. And it's, it's a bright, bold color and it looks gorgeous. Maybe lime green might be a little out there for you, but I'm going to show you some colors that really are stunning and uh, I might turn you over to the dark side, <laughs> okay? Uh, so talking about color, uh, this is my, like my all-time favorite subject. You get me at a party and I will talk about color forever. So should I keep everything light in color? If you Googled uh, small spaces, the first thing you will see on mostly all of those is use light colors. Now, this is the slide that I, I showed at the beginning. What do you think my answer to that is? No. How amazing does this look? And it's black. It's one of the darkest colors that you could ever use. And this looks absolutely stunning. They've even used the black, if you notice here, into the bathroom as well too. But they've also kept everything else white They've used white accents, a nice bleached floor. And it's dramatic, it's uh, sexy. You know, 
I often say to my clients when they're hesitant about, hesitant about using dark colors, I said, you know, this is the kind of color that you're going to go into your friend's home and you're going to come home and go, oh my goodness, that looks so amazing. But you're afraid to use it yourself. And I'm here to help you with that. <laughs> and, and I know how it feels too, because I myself in my own home for years, uh, I was uh, timid to use dark colors. That same small home that I talked about, I was recommending them to my clients all the time. And I was uh, in love with them when it, it, you know I'd come back and I'd see these wonderful colors. And then I finally uh, took the plunge myself in my own home and got nothing but compliments. And it was a pretty dark color. It was called the uh, Benjamin Moore Giant Sequoia, which is almost like a dark cedar color. And I did the whole dining room and living room in that color and it was stunning. So no, don't, don't do everything like color. Please don't do that. <laughs> With your colors, though, um, I'm going to talk about the color wheel. Here's my favorite decorating tool. And if you can, go to Michael's. There's even little mini ones of these. They are very, very helpful when you're decorating. And the, the color wheel itself is divided in just basically two sides. You'll find the, the one half is warm colors. And that goes right from the red, violet, red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, and yellow. And then this half is the cool colors. The yellow, green, green, blue, green, blue, blue, violet, and the violet. What happens is that warm colors tend to advance, which means a room with a warm color will tend to be, feel more closed in as opposed to a war room with a cool color. Uh, I have a web-based uh, Zoom class called The Psychology of Color, and it's really fascinating. There's a whole psychology of color, uh, physiology as to how colors affect us. They've done studies of people put a group of people in a red room, put another group of people in a blue room, and the people in the red room, their temperature has been elevated up to three degrees above those in the blue room. So color can have a huge, huge effect on us. But visually, though, cool colors will tend to expand the space. So you could use a darker cool color and it will seem more spacious than a light warm color. Just to confuse matter more, uh, have you ever heard people talk, well, that's a warm green or that's a warm red or a cool red? And here's what it means. So if this is a, this is a warm green and why it's a warm green is this one here is because it's closer to the warm side. This one is a cool green because it's closer to the blue, okay? And the same with the red. This red is a cool red because it's closer to the blue side. And this is a warm red because it's closer to the warm side. Cool colors. So here we see a cool color. Its intensity is actually fairly dark. If um, all of our colors in our color uh, paint colors, okay, they all have what's called a light reflectance value. If zero is the blackest black and 100 is the whitest white, um, I would say this might even be about 55 or 60. So it's not a light color. Uh, it tends to be more of a darker, cool color. But what makes it feel um, fresh, expansive, uh, and open is uh, the fact that it is a cool color. And also what helps as well is the white accents that really 
uh, help to give it a fresh uh, feel to it as well too. So there's some tricks for you, okay? Go with uh, some dark colors, try a cool color. Uh, just a rather side note to confuse things a bit more. Uh, look at the orientation of your home, okay? I care, when I'm doing a color consultation for paint, I carry a compass with me. And if I'm not sure of the orientation or the homeowner isn't, then um, I'll get the compass out. And if it's a north facing room, that's a room that won't get a lot of um, warm light. So cool colors can tend to make the room look kind of dank and not the best use of color. Tend to, it's best to use more of a warmer tone color. Okay, a south facing room, uh, for instance, I had a home um, that uh, had a, a southern exposure that we, that was the time of day that we spent most of the time in. And it, even if it was cold in that room, it visually felt hot. So a cool color would visually cool down that room. Uh, I may want to avoid a warm color because then I'd all feel even warmer in that room, okay? Now, uh, here's a sky blue in a bedroom. Uh, these beautiful blues, I, I love the, what I call Martha Stewart blue too, that almost that robin's egg blue. They're beautiful uh, for bedrooms. Uh, blues are very healing colors, uh, soothing colors. They give a bedroom an almost dreamy feeling. A soft uh, shade of blue is going to make it feel uh, very restful and expansive as well, too. And I love a color scheme of brown and blue. So this wood, I'm just going to call it brown and blue. So even if you had like a soft cocoa color uh, linen even here and the blue, that would look amazing as well, too. Okay. Warm colors. Um, here's an example of a warm color. This is like a soft blonde or a golden color and it adds warmth to a space. Again, if this was a north facing room, this would be an excellent color for that. Uh, keeping the value light is not going to close the area in. Value, what value means when we refer to it as color, means how light or dark the color is. Uh, another word for color is hue. Now, something that I want to say about this picture too. Do you notice it's a small little area and what they've done is they've used a glass table. It's a pretty big table, but visually it doesn't take up a lot of space because it's a glass top. Also, they've used furniture that's a hue or color it, that's similar to the wall. So it's almost kind of blending into the wall. And that's a way to give the illusion of more space to a room as well too. Let's imagine that you're stuck with Aunt Frida's large green sofa. And you know, you have to make do with it for the next couple of years then you would want to try to select a value of green for the wall. It will camouflage that sofa that you may not really like rather than using another color or a contrasting color, which is going to make that green sofa pop and accent the fact that you don't really like that green sofa, okay? Um, I did this with a client once and they couldn't believe they actually almost liked the ugly sofa <laughs> that they'd inherited uh, when they did that with their wall color. Dark colors, yay. <laughs> Can you tell I, I'm pushing dark colors today? Uh, they're great for small transitional rooms. A transitional room is something like a laundry room or a powder room. And if you, you know what, if you're a little nervous about using a dark color, a uh, powder room's a great room to, to start with. 
because how fun is that when you have a, a guest over and they open up the room and instead of a boring light ho-hum color, they say, see something fun like this. Uh, they're beautiful for feature walls, like the headboard wall of your bedroom or in the living room, the back of the sofa wall. They're great for defining spaces. So defining um, one area from another. If you have a wall like that, that can be done with it, a divided wall. Uh, like I said, they're a nice surprise. They provide a real wow factor. And what um, helps here is you notice what they've done is used a high contrast in value. So what they have is a quite a dark color and a very light color. So here is a zero and down here is something like a 95. You remember when I talked about the zero and a hundred? So they get provided here light textiles and accents and that gives a nice light airy feel to it. The floor as well is uh, light. A monochromatic color scheme where all of the colors are the same is also uh, a nice way to give the illusion of more space. So this is that idea where your furniture is blending in with the wall. Look at this teeny tiny space. How nice it works though. Uh, they've got a big sectional here, uh, but they've got uh, it uh, blending in with the wall. So the size of it isn't going to jump out at you. The thing to keep in mind when you're using monochromatics, so all sort of uh, one color, but different shades of that color, is to use texture. If everything was the same finish, so imagine that I had everything shaggy, it's too much, or if I had everything smooth, it was too much. We want to vary the texture of the items in there. And then that's what makes it interesting. Because the color is all the same, we want to make it interesting by providing different textures. So here's an example of a monochromatic. Uh, we can create shades of that color. And he, here's something you can impress uh, people with uh, at dinner tonight. A shade is a color that you've added black to. So here we see this teal color and what happens to it when we add it black. Um, did you know that when you add green to yellow, it turns into black? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> When we have that teal color and we add gray to it, we get a tone. And then a tint is when we take a color and we add white to it. So if I'm going to the paint store and I'm trying to you know, describe to them what I want with my paints, then I will be able to use the word shade if I want it to look more black or a tint if I want a lighter pastel-y kind of feel to it. But if I want it more grayed down, I'll tell the paint store that I want a tone of that color. Albert Hadley, he has such amazing uh, quotes. The essence of interior design will always be about the people and how they live. It's about the realities of what makes for attractive, civilized, meaningful environment, not about fashion or what's in and what's out. This is not an easy job. So your home basically should be about what you love and especially for a small scale home about what is going to work for you, right? Mirrors and glass, oldest decorating trick in the book, right? Put a mirror in place. But mirrors can also be used to bounce light into the room. So do you remember I said about north facing rooms, how often they don't get the quality of light that we want? So you can use a mirror on a wall near a window to bounce light into the room and get more light into that room. 
Here's another example. This, this mirror does a lot of things here, actually. This is a pretty small area here. Again, they've used a glass top table to, um, again, what glass does is it, it is, it's not there. So you, you don't visually take up that space when you use a glass top table. So they've used a glass top table. They've used a monochromatic color scheme They've placed the mirror and almost built it into the wall. So it's not taking up space into the room. They've put it next to the window. So it's bouncing light into the window. And they've also placed it in a way in, in a large uh, format. So that almost doubles the size of the room. So this mirror is doing a lot of things in this space. It, it's a really, really good use of a mirror here. Also as well, even the light picture that they've used, it's not heavy at all. It's crystal, very light and airy. So a lot of thought given to this space. Um, mirrors can be used to expand the space and increase the visual feel of the area. Don't feel that you have to build in a mirror. Um, get a big mirror like this and just plunk it up against the side of a wall. Uh, this is a uh, really popular idea right now and it looks amazing. This is a beautiful mirror, a lovely ornate frame and works really, really well. You can see here again, this is not a huge space, but it's almost doubled the size of the space. Ah, oh, I love this. This is stunning what they've done here. So this looks like a little bit of a recessed area here in this condo. Um, they've already got such an amazing view and it looks like floor to ceiling uh, windows. But what they've done, they have multiplied that. They have put this recess, uh, they put floor to ceiling mirrors in there, a little console. So they've doubled their view. Again, they've got the reflective light happening with the uh, mirror and they've doubled their space. And when, if you took that mirror away, that space is not very big at all, but look what that mirror does. It's working overtime there. Really, really good work there. Again, this bathroom without that mirror, not that big really. Uh, to have a, a tub like that in it. And uh, they've got, the, you know, they've used the mirrors here, but floor to ceiling mirrors here. They, these might even be individual mirrors that they've framed out. And with the way that they've used the light and the mirrors, um, again, increased the space tremendously and given it a really light, airy feel. So the details are not the details. They make the design. Um, I obsess about the tiniest thing when I'm designing a room. And I tell my clients, those are the things that the difference between coming in a room and saying, oh, that's nice and going, oh, wow, this is really nice. So those details, just, you know, if you are looking for something and it's not coming together, don't settle for it. Wait for that perfect detail. It will be so worth it. This quote is by Charles Eames. And if you're not familiar with who he is, you may be when I show you this chair. Uh, trivia time. You've probably seen an Eames Lounge chair at some point in your life. Um, it's a distinctive leather and wood chair with a matching ottoman, and it's an iconic modern furniture design, and it's been around since 1956. An original Eames chair nowadays is probably, uh, I mean, replicas are in around $1,800, so originals are probably worth thousands of dollars now. They're such a classic, beautiful design scale and not the way scale type. So what you want to look for in a small scale home is small, lightly scaled pieces. Furniture that's trim, lightly scaled. 
is going to suit best. So open legs, notice this does not have a skirt coming right down. It doesn't come right down to the floor. Uh, it has slender arms and uh, tight backed cushions. It's two cushions as well that I recommend. And anyways, who sits in that third cushion in the middle? Unless they're forced to at Thanksgiving. That's what I find most of the time. You know, most people will just sit on the other two cushions on the end anyways. So you don't want to look for something like this, okay? This comes down, it looks very bulky and heavy, big fat arms, big bulky cushions. It's too inflated uh, for a small scale room. Beautiful, beautiful light scale. This is a Canadian company out of Montreal. Uh, the glass top again, but also very beautiful, elegant, slender legs and open legs as well too. And round, right? Uh, here's, oh, nesting tables. They're fabulous for small spaces because um, you can always pull them out and use extra ones as needed and then tuck them away when you don't need them. But again, uh, open legs. This has a beautiful light Carrera marble top on it. So visually it's a, it has a light uh, feel to it. And again, um, the, uh, the, the piece before as well is from uh, Renwell and both of these pieces as well, the company out of Montreal. Um, and uh, lightly, lightly scaled. These are almost seem to disappear. So a uh, console for a, a small hallway, lightly scaled and a bookshelf uh, for a office area or uh, living room. Now for the bedroom, um, you want to think about simple headboards. Um, sometimes upholstered headboards can be fairly heavy. So stay away from the quilted ones or the big heavy looking uh, upholstered headboards. Simple headboards, uh, you could go with a bit of the nail head around here, but other than that, keep it really simple, clean lines. Uh, design is coming to grips with one's real lifestyle, one's real place in the world. The room should not be put together for show, but should nourish one's well-being. Amen. I think, you know, during all of this over the past year, we're realizing that more and more. Uh, my business is absolutely crazy busy because people are at home more and they're looking at their four walls and they're thinking this is my nest and I want to make it really comfortable and um, that you know as a result uh, people are spending more time in their homes and um, wanting to feather their nest. So let's talk about defining the areas. <laughs> yeah so sometimes you know if you're moving into a condo my pet peeve is the bowling alley look you know, the open concept where everything is all in one huge rectangle. And what do you do with that? Sometimes people will just line everything up around the walls and don't feel that you have to do that. That's, that's probably the most boring thing that you can do other than painting everything light. <laughs> so here's some ideas to make it more interesting. Use a sofa as a room divider. Don't feel like you have to stick it up against the wall. Look at how they've used it here. Again, not a big area. They've used a little, this is probably a little love seat and put it out this way. There might be another love seat on this side and they've created a nice little intimate grouping and there's the kitchen area over there. So they've defined the area really nicely rather than just sticking this up against the wall. Um, now, this, I love this grouping. It, it kind of goes against, it's a three seater, but uh, let's pretend it's the two seater while a little bit smaller scale, but it is lightly scaled, nice thin arms, open legs. So that part's good. 
what they've done is use an area rug to define the area because this could be just one mass of, you know, bowling alley, basically. Uh, one thing I would do though, I'm not loving this coffee table. What happens with this kind of thing, if you're sitting here, uh, you will have to be leaping up to put your drink down or get orders or whatever. So I would put something like nesting tables here or maybe a longer rectangle, ta uh, rectangle uh, coffee table there. And um, I really recommend two smaller scale sofas and have them facing together. You're going to see a lot of slides using that example and it works really well. And looking at the back of the sofa is really boring. And what I'm recommending is to find a, a beautiful console, maybe with storage even, or a glass console. It gives you a place to put your lighting. And if you don't have a coffee table in front, a place to put a cup of tea or whatever. And you can also put baskets underneath for magazines or blankets. And a drawer is nice as well for TV remotes. And it just softens the whole back side of the sofa, makes it a lot more interesting. And again, defines the area between say your dining room or kitchen and your living room area. Having nothing in your home, oh, have nothing in your home that you do not know to be useful and beautiful. Oh, I, I really messed that up. So let's try again. Have nothing in your home that you do not know to be useful and believe to be beautiful. That's William Morris. So he, I, Morris chairs are back into the very, very, he's one of the very, very first uh, furniture manufacturers in North America, William Morris. Focal points. Now, focal point, if you have a dazzling focal point, nobody's going to notice that you're in a teeny tiny condo. Believe me, they won't. They're going to be dazzled by your focal point. Now, what is the first thing that catches your eye when you walk into the room? It's the focal point. Um, it can be the natural starting point of your room's design. And often your furniture is arranged around the focal point. So focal points, what are they? They can be a fireplace. They can be artwork. In this case, it's a beautiful view. And sometimes the TV. And I have a sad face here because I, I just hate to see the TV as the focal point. Yeah. So let's look at this room. It's, it's not really that big, but look what they've done. Okay, these are big sofas, granted, but they've got that nice little arrangement for conversation. They've used a glass coffee table. They've got almost a tone on tone happening here. They have arranged it around a beautiful view. They have a mirror to reflect light into the room and they have some gorgeous big stunning artwork so they've used a lot of tricks in this room for small spaces and it's stunning works really really well if you don't have a focal point then create one uh, here's an excellent idea they've got a beautiful mirror but don't just put the mirror there. Let's fill it out a bit. Um, they've used complementary colors in the uh, artwork that they've framed around it. And what this is almost is a big rectangle itself, almost the size of the sofa, okay? So you're replicating that space. Oops, sorry. Replicating that space again up onto the wall here. You see that? And again, my favorite arrangement for small spaces is the grouping. Coffee table in the center. You've got good lighting on either side. 
So that definitely draws your eye in. There's your focal point right there. A focal point, as I said, it can also be artwork to make a statement, or it can be a distinctive piece of art, uh, sorry, furniture. Now here, like the first thing that I saw when I saw this photo was I was drawn to this unique piece of furniture. And then second, this oversized uh, portrait here, uh, uh, photograph. And then, okay, I'm gonna say it again, look at the arrangement, a nice little grouping. You know, another pet peeve of mine is if you're lining things up around the wall, and I put these chairs over here. Have you ever noticed if you're the person that gets stuck over there by the end of the night, you're almost tired from having to um, project your voice. And that's what happens when you're too far away. This is a perfect distance for conversing with someone in a comfortable manner, whether it be a large home or a small home. And I say the same things to clients that are in large homes. Don't line everything up around the walls. Create intimate conversation groupings. Large captivating works of art. Again, this is a small area. They do have tall, uh, lofty kind of ceilings here, um, but they've used that space by going upwards. So again, they've made a nice little grouping with the seat, seating and used a nice big focal point piece of art there to capture your attention. And notice what they've done with the seating over here. They brought the seal, or sorry, seating up. So instead of a low seating here, they've brought seating up into this space to balance it out this large piece of artwork. If things were low over here, it would look a little off balance, right? But they've also used this vertical space um, by using these tall, uh, this tall table and the tall seating. And you can also create a focal point with a light fixture. I have a thing for light and lamps like some women have for shoes love lights and distinct lights and here's a beautiful one as well really it's quite contemporary and you probably wouldn't think about putting it in what looks like a very uh, traditional room but this really works so they've done lots of cool things here notice it's not that big of an area again black walls yay but kept mostly everything else fairly light. They've got really good lighting in the area. And another trick as well, they've got really tall windows, but um, I think I have another picture further on as well that does this. Bring uh, your draperies way up. So bring them up above, like let's say that window wasn't there. You could even bring the drapery rod right up along here instead of hanging them low and into the window, hang them almost to the outside and bring them up as high as you can. And that's another trick that's going to give the illusion of more space to the room. Decorating is really about creating a quality of life, a beauty in life that nourishes the soul. It makes life beautiful. That's what this is all about, not just what's in and what is out. Albert Hadley. Now, this is everything that I've said not to do, but it works beautifully. I would say this room could be so comfortable. It's obviously a rec room. You can tell that by the positioning of the window. They've got a massive sofa in here, but this is probably a large family and they need that. Uh, they've got a huge ottoman, but they've used that as a coffee table, which could also be used for extra seating, but it works really, really well. Do you see this measurement here? 18 inches is a magic number uh, for the sofa to the coffee table. That gives a comfortable space to walk around 
and also being able to lean forward and put something on the coffee table without having to leap up to put something on the coffee table. There's that focal point, but hey, look, they've created a really lovely one over here with this arrangement. So you almost don't notice this TV here. Dark walls in this small space, beautiful. And I just can't say enough about this, but even though it's got a big honking sofa and ottoman, it works really, really well. I say this is highly functional. And this is an example of what I was talking about with the draperies. So instead of hanging the rod here, take them up. If the edge of the window is here, uh, don't take this side of the drapery to that edge, put this side of the drapery to that edge. So it gives the illusion of a wider window. And then this also draws your eye up as well too. Uh, that is a big sofa for here. Um, what seems to make it work though is a large bookshelf on the other side. So the big sofa is balanced out by the large bookshelf um, and the glass coffee table. So I think I'd, I think I'd probably put a different sofa in there, but that's just me saying that. <laughs> this room, oh my goodness, so many amazing things about this one. Favorite grouping, Gail's favorite grouping happening here, okay? Glass coffee table, so visually doesn't take up the space. Uh, and a beautiful little focal point here. They've got a large, larger room, not huge, but they've got a, a big room. And they've defined the different areas. And they've done that by arranging their furniture, but they've also used an area rug to help define that area. But look back here, you almost don't notice it until you actually look at the wall. Those are three mirrors. Now, how smart is that? It's almost like you, if you're looking, you think it's windows, but it's not. So we're expanding the space there. And that's the dining room area back there. And then that dining room has its own little focal point with the arrangement of uh, artwork there. So very nicely done. I, even the little um, coffee, uh, sorry, side table between the chairs is open legs, lightly scaled, light top, everything super duper here, really nice. Here's a bit of a monochromatic uh, color scheme, but they have used um, uh, a pale lemon yellow as an accent color. I would say this is almost like a focal point piece of furniture too, because this is what I, my eye was drawn to is the funky rocking chair. And again, nice big oversized art. Uh, I think I actually put the larger piece of artwork over here and the smaller one there because my I think I would like the my line to go this way rather than that way. But um, that's a nice little grouping again defined by an area rug and close enough that we can comfortably talk lighting access. There's three types of lighting. There's a uh, task lighting that you'll need if you're sitting here, you're reading, you're knitting, sewing, whatever. Ambient lighting, like general overhead lighting, you drop an earring, you want to find it in the carpet. And then accent lighting. Accent lighting is things like pot lights or, uh, you know, a, a floor lamp, an up light, that type of thing. This is an example of a monochromatic color scheme. Now, they have these white bookshelves here, but again, if the white wasn't there, uh, then the gray almost blends in with the back wall. It is a large sofa, but because we have a monochromatic color scheme, that helps give the illusion of more space. 
nice little grouping. These ottomans are almost multifunctional because they can move to, be moved around easily into little, uh, you know, into different areas and used in different ways. And you often see, I have an ottoman like this actually where the top comes off and there's storage inside of it too. So you can get them like that. And so questions and answers then. Thank you, Gail. You're that was welcome. great. A lot of great, a lot of great tips and, and tricks. Um, I like you. the uh, multifunctional furniture at the very beginning. Thank uh, you. So if anyone has any questions, you can put them into the chat and Gail will answer them for you. Any, no, any questions? Wow. <laughs> Everybody's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you've answered everyone's question. Yeah. <laughs> no questions from anyone? Going, going. <laughs> Okay. Oh, there we go. You mentioned colors for north and south facing rooms. How about east facing? Uh, well, east you get, let's see, and so east you would get a little of both. So your west is where your sun sets, right? And then your, no, sorry, the west is, yeah, your west is where your sun sets, isn't it? So it's not so much a concern in east and west, basically. It's just the north and the south because they're the extremes. Um, so really, I don't, I don't, um, because you get it really you, in an east, you'll get a little of both because your sun is rising and setting. So you're, you're going to be, it'll come if you're east over here, your sun will be coming this way so you are going to be getting the full spectrum and the same with if you're west but if if you're north or south you're only going to be getting one or the other so i don't worry about it so much if it's east or west except as i said um i that example that i used in my own home where it was our family room and our kitchen where we got where we were in the home most of the time when we were getting the setting sun and that room always felt warm even you know if it was a cold day because of the southern exposure right but you don't find that so much on an eastern or western exposure does that answer your question and there was another question uh, if they just wondered if you could review the north facing room color choices. Okay, so in a northern facing room, what you'll find is that uh, the lighting is often uh, cool. It's a uh, kind of grayish. It's not very warm. Um, there's if you go into Canadian Tire or Home Depot and you look at the light bulbs that they have out now, you'll see they have a warm white light bulb and they have a cool white light bulb. Well, your northern facing room is like the cool white. Um, so not a lot of warmth to it. Um, and so it can feel a little bit depressing sometimes, not very cozy. Um, and whereas, like I said, that southern exposure in my home felt too cozy. So we want to do things to give the illusion of some warmth and some lightness to the room. And we can do that by using color. So I would definitely try to stay away from using a blue color in a north facing room. 
or greens because they're going to cool it down even more so. So try to stick more. But if you love green, then use, do you remember when I talked about the, the cool green and the warm green? Then use a warm green. And that could be something like a soft lime green that could be really nice. Or a lemongrass, that would be nice. You know, that yellow that has a, a green undertone. If you're a green lover and you have a north facing room, put a little bit of yellow into it and that will warm up the room. Okay. And then blues, they can have a bit of a ready undertone to them. Um, for instance, almost like a periwinkle, that would be a warm blue rather than a real cold blue. And, you know, people, when I, when I talk about this, the, they'll often kind of glaze over, but it's not until I have, and, and you won't be able to see it here because it doesn't translate that well on um, camera. But when I show them my colors and then I sh show them here. Okay, so you can see here, here's my green section. Can you see this okay, everybody? And here, the way that this is set up, these greens are towards the blue and these greens are towards the yellow. So if you went into the paint store, you know how they have that all set up like that? Look for greens closer to the yellow section. Those are warm greens, okay? These are my warm greens over here, my limey kind of greens. Whereas these seafoam greens are the bluey greens. Those are the cold greens. So I wanna stay away from those. So just a, a follow up from the same um, participant was that she struggles with her Southeast family room color choice. So currently it's a darker caramel color and what would help it look brighter for, from a caramel color? Um, what else is happening in the room? What, like what are the windows like and what is the furnishing like? Okay. Go ahead, Diana. I've unmuted you if you wanted to speak to Gail. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, Hi. Good morning or afternoon. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what time it is anymore. Um, I uh, We have the morning sun comes up in the back of our house where our family room and kitchen is. And we have um, a fireplace that has wood around it. And it's the stain didn't work out exactly like what we thought it would. And it's more of a, a caramelly color. And it kind of blends in with the wall too, but it's a very warm um, kind of camel caramel color. We've got worn um, brown, kind of a burgundy brown leather furniture. And I have glass, uh, a glass coffee table and side tables, but I just find, um, and, and there's a very large kind of three section window so a lot of the sun comes in in the morning, but then when the sun moves to the front of the house, um, we we just find it's very dark feeling right, right. in there. Okay. Um, even even with the window wide open. Right. Um, so I I think I'd like to do a different color. I'm just not sure if I'm in the right color family, or um, right. And our and our floor is a lighter um, hardwood. So, so the caramel, does it have an orange undertone? Yes. Okay. And your sofa's burgundy color, like a red? It's like, um, 
you know, like that Indian red, it's like yeah. year old uh, leather. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what about more of um, a lighter tan color? That could look nice with the the sofa. Mm -hmm. um, not so orange, but more of a an like I'm thinking. But it's, I don't know. Like sort of in. Can you see the, in this neighborhood, like in around mm -hmm. here? Is that the Benjamin Moore paints? Um, this one's Sherwin Williams. I also have Benjamin Moore. Um, Actually, I have, I have a Sherwin Williams deck right now. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've specced Benjamin Moore forever. I've, I've, they used to have a referral system too, where they would refer and I would go out and do color consults for, through Benjamin Moore. So, um, so even you could get like almost a tan color with a little bit of a, I hate to just use the word because people still cringe from overdose of the 80s, but like a little bit of a pinky undertone to it to mm -hmm. acknowledge the red in the sofa. Okay. Uh, I'll show you, like if you've got a Sherwin-Williams, um, like uh, SW9087, that's that is, um, let's see, what's the LRV on that? I think it's a 40. It's not too, too dark. Um, uh, on the light reflectance value, so it's a 40. 50 is the middle of the road, okay? So, and zero is the black is black. So this is the next one from the 9087 is 9086, which is nice. That's got a nice, almost a soft uh, tan blush undertone to it. Um, those would be very, it's called cool beige and smoky beige. I think those could look nice with the Indian red. When you start to go to the left, they get very pinky. Yeah. Um, uh, and then I'm I'm thinking of a Benjamin Moore one that I use that's really nice and I, I can't think of the name of it right now. I will at two in the morning though. <laughs> 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 Sorry, but it's really nice. It's got a pinky undertone without being pink. Mm, there mm. it all. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully I'll think of it before this ends. <laughs> Okay, thank Any you. Other questions? You're welcome. Any more questions? Okay, if there aren't any more questions, I think our session is done. I would like to thank everyone for attending. I would like to thank Gail for the great presentation. I hope thank everyone you. found it as informative as I did. Um, and please check out more webinars and programs on the home based activities page of our library website. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye for now. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye now.